Okay, Sean, uh, how old are you? I'm, I just turned 41 in May. Who did we uh, figure out last night that he was 40? Was it Pritz? Yeah, Coach Pritz. <laughs> Coach Pritz is actually 42. He just turned 42, so... <laughs> that was funny because he like funny. realized he was 42. Right, it right. was actually a, a, a pretty hilarious moment. But um, so you just talked about the, two, the 2012 Olympic trials yeah. and you made the quarterfinals. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember exactly what, if it was the quarterfinals. I'm not sure if it was the second round or the quarterfinals. I don't remember. Now, it, there's a lot of really good guys who don't qualify for the Olympic trials. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's, it's tough to get in, but you have been competing since you were... Did you say six, seven? Yeah, seven. So seven years old, Toledo, Ohio. Yep. To, you know, we just went through the, the myriad of places you've been. Yeah. It's like kind of crazy. It's like you're a well-traveled guy, but um, I look at it and you're 41. Yep. And you and I talked and you, you dropped something on me the other day. I did. And, and uh, it was pretty amazing to me, but, uh, you know, Coach Mena was here. Mm -hmm. And, and what, are, what have you guys been talking about? So... Uh, since 2012, I've still had this kind of, you know, uh, itch, you know, burning desire to compete in wrestling still. Um, as I'm getting older and my body is supposed to be not, from what everybody tells me, I'm not supposed to be feeling this good or, or, or you know, being able to get stronger at this time, fast or whatever. Uh, I know technically I'm fine, but, you know, uh, my body's not wearing down like it's supposed to. And so... Um, Coach Mena asked me one day when he was here a couple weeks ago if I had any any eligibility left for uh, Division Three. I didn't know the rules at the time or anything. I'd never entertained this thought, you know, not once ever. The whole time I was coaching at Iowa or Pennsylvania or Maryland, I never thought about this one time ever. Ten years prior to that, I never thought about this one time ever. And uh, it turns out that I do have some eligibility, so I'm going to go and... Um, I'm going to wrestle for Coach Men and Coach John McGovern at University of Dubuque while I finish up my education. Okay, you're a father of four. Father of four. And you guys are moving off this campus mm -hmm. here at Legends of Gold in Beersdorf, Beersdorf South Dakota. Mm -hmm. And you're moving to Dubuque, Iowa. Yeah. I mean, most people are going to say, well, that's a little crazy. You're 41. Yep. What would you say to someone who said, I, I, I don't think it's crazy. I'm, I'm just... What well, would you say though? Like that, that? Are you are you sure that's the right thing for you? And is this is this what's best for your family? One hundred percent is best for my family. Is why? It, is why it, is it best for your family? Well, because I'm gonna be able to get my degree finished up and something that you know. Uh, I want to practice what I preach. I don't want to be a guy that's telling these kids, these college guys, go get your degree, go get your education. And I've never done that myself. I made some you know different decisions when I was younger. I I. I I went off of more emotion and what I wanted to do then. And now I've come back to this point that my grandfather, my father, you know, everyone in my life, my family, and everybody knows that, you know, you have to have that education. Yes, it's about having a degree, but I, but it's more about the education for me and finishing something that I started a long time ago. And so the wrestling, you know, talking to my wife about it, talking to Coach McGovern and, and specifically Coach Mena, um, you know, we, we think that it's going to be a good thing for me to get that to, to kind of put my wrestling career competitively to rest it's going to be a good way to do that while I can go and be on a college team and have you know my four daughters come and watch me wrestle and dual meet matches like they watch David and Nico and Ed and Frank Molinaro you know Cam Wade and guys Brian Pierce I was coaching at West Point now guys that they know and have seen compete uh, now they're going to get to see their dad do that which is really exciting for them um, but we're gonna to have to do training differently. You know, obviously there's gonna be some changes that I need to make uh, in training wise so I don't get worn down and, and, and I don't have my body catch up with me. So we've been talking really closely about what I'm gonna be doing and uh, so I feel best during competitions and, and at the end of the year when it matters the most. You wrestled 55 kilos in 2012, mm -hmm. which is 121 and change, right? Mm -hmm. 25, 33, what, what weight do you go? And, I mean, most people are going to be like, 41-year-old dude, that's insane. Yeah. Right? They're not wrong about that. It, it's a little crazy. It's crazy. When you told me, I was like, whoa. Yeah, it's but, crazy. But, like, you got to, like, oh, this is your passion. Sure. And you you still wrestle every day. That's what's crazy to me. Like, you're drilling, joint technique, or doing some live on the mat every day, like six, six days a week, basically. Six days a week, yeah. That's not how it's supposed to go. 
Your body's supposed to have broken down. You have had a shoulder thing and a yep. knee scope or two, but yep. not anything where it's like devastating. The shoulder thing was pretty pretty rough on me, uh, more mentally because you know, I mean, I just grinded myself down. I lifted hard five days a week. Then I was doing a lot of chest and push ups and stuff, and you know, I didn't really use the science of, of training a lot. I would go, well, you know. You gotta go hard all the time. When we were kids, that was a big thing, and now we have more science and we use more, you know, scientific approach to training and, and recovery, which I wasn't really doing then. And so, uh, yeah, I, I wrestle as much as possible, you know, as much as my body allows me to. And that's one thing that Kale and them guys have also helped me do a lot was listen to your body. When it's time to go hard, then you give it 100% effort. And then when when you're too tired to go or when you feel like you're starting to get worn down, then you back off. You recover. You you train smarter you hit drills you know you don't go as hard live you're too old for that and and you know we got to make sure that you're you're saving yourself for one like i said the national championships the regional championships things that matter the most at the end of the end of the day and so um it's crazy but if people know me they know that it's not really that crazy so i mean it's just i guess it's all up to the individual yes i'm old 41 but in the end i'm like you know, body wise. You don't look under- 41. Let's just get that straight. <laughs> yeah. We told a funny story last night about you getting your ID stolen and you are recovering your ID. But that's right. And it was like you were 21, but you looked 12. Yeah. That's but right. now you don't. You look 25, 30, maybe. Right. But and you know, but it, okay. So what is different about you from a 19, 20 year old at the University of Michigan to a 41 year old at Dubuque? What What's different there? Sure. Uh, well, on t- not just from a you know maturity level my wife uh helped me realize certain things in my life that needed to happen and needed to change for me to be a good man and be a good role model for my children because i want them to be good people first i want them to be people of character you know high moral standards and stuff like that and and you know, I made bad choices when I was younger. You know, it's it's easy to it's easy to blame these people or those people or the people that are around you when you're in situations. But you know, in the end, I am the one that made those choices. I'm responsible for my actions, and 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 you know, I'm using my thumbs more than I'm using my fingers. And and as a kid, you know, you can you can point the finger at other people and feel like that's okay. And now I'm more much more accountable for my own actions. Um, I also know that there's a reason why we're doing things. There's a plan, and I don't even I don't have to have the answer as long as they tell me this is what we're doing. Then I need to know that I got to do my best at that. And and um, that kid was a little bit cocky and arrogant going in, and he may have thought he knew a lot of stuff, you know. But this guy, who who really knows more than that kid, is just like starving for more. Um, Coach Meta likes to say. Uh, better never stops and so I want to be better okay so our society and my dad is like a big almost like he talks about how our society is appraises way too much value on a college education mm-hmm. and you know I, I mean, I've been to I've done graduate school I've sure. done all I, I have a bunch you know sure I don't really it doesn't really mean that much to me to have degrees but does our society place too much emphasis like it is literally the th- only thing that has stopped you from getting on the, as a, a staff member as mm-hmm. far as not strength and conditioning but being a staff that's literally the only thing that stopped you from you'd already be 15 years in the coaching had you gone on the plan that you know when you went to Michigan sure. as a 19 year old you'd already be 15 20 years in the coaching yeah does our society appraise too high of a value on a piece of paper in a lot of people's minds um uh that's a tough question because it's that, held you know, it's held honestly, you back from it has, being, but in the end you know um it's it's vital. Your education education is vital. You know, uh, the word ignorance means a lot of things to a lot of people, but, you know, you, you don't know what you don't know. And I think that the best way you can do it is to go learn it, you know. And, and I think to change what you're saying a little bit, I think maybe there's a, a lot of emphasis on the piece of paper rather than the education. You know what I'm saying? I think people... Uh, put a lot of emphasis on that bachelor's degree or that master's degree and, and who knows what it really, you know what I mean, what went into that, you know, you don't really know. The education part of it is is the vital component. So I would say, t- to answer that question, they don't put an, a, enough emphasis on the education, they put too much emphasis on the outcome. You can't really focus on the results, man, it's the process, it's the journey. And that is one of Kale Sanderson's big 
uh, messages to, to get to his guys. And, and Casey and Cody are all on the same page with that. It's not about the results because you can't always control that. You know, you, you don't, in wrestling, you get bad calls. You know, you don't feel good one day. You get hurt. Something happens. You, you can't control the outcome. All you can do is control yourself and focus on the process. And that's, that's kind of what I think that it should be. It should be more focused on the education. You know, do you need to have a higher degree to, to run a farm? Probably not. You know, to do farming business, you need it. But, but who knows more about farming business than farmers? You know what I mean? And so, um, you know, maybe there is a lot of emphasis on the, on the degree, on the piece of paper. You, you get what I'm saying. Though. Absolutely. It's like, it doesn't make me a better person than you. It just makes me more qualified to, I just have the essential credential to teach or whatever. Sure, absolutely. You get what I'm saying. Yeah, absolutely. I think, like, as far as education-wise... Like streetwise is like an East Toledo guy, <laughs> and like your journey in general. I think that I don't think that we could give you ten degrees for the amount of experience you have coaching. Right. You're gonna forget more wrestling this afternoon than I know. That's pretty. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. pretty incredible. Like the the guys you've been around and the people you've absorbed sure. from. That I I guess that's my one. In the end, like I, that's what's a little disappointing for me. Well, you know, my dad would probably agree with you on that disappointing part because. You know, I was on track to do everything I wanted to do, and I kind of sidetracked that for, you know, I put that aside for things that I wanted then rather than what I really wanted. And important things are, you know, you got to learn those lessons, and you got to take the move forward with that.